Hey everyone, in this lesson we are going to be working on setting up our environment for our horror game. Now since we are working on a horror game and it's meant to be tense and scary, uh, our environment is going to be very important in order to create that experience. So, first of all we need some ground for our player to actually walk on. And for this what we're going to do is we are going to go down to our models folder and we here have a terrain.obj. Now with this, we're just going to drag that into the level here, set the position in our transform drop down to be 0, 0, 0, and I'm also going to increase the scale a bit, so I'm going to increase that to 1.5, just so it is a bit bigger and we have more room to run around. Uh, we can then go down to our file system and drag in the terrain material that we have right here as well, and this is just going to apply a nice grass texture to our terrain. And then what we want to do is we want to make this a static uh, body, so we're going to create a new node here of type static body 3D. We can make the terrain a child of that. I'm going to rename the terrain to be model, and I'm going to rename the static body to be terrain. Then we can select our model, and we need to add a collider in order for the player to actually be able to walk around. So we'll click on mesh, and then go to create tri mesh collision sibling. And there we go. So we can save that, we can press play, and see if it works. So as you can see, our player can look around, they can move, they can jump, they can sprint, they can even open up their inventory. Uh, but right now we don't really have any lighting or anything here. So what we're going to do is as a temporary measure, we're going to give the player a basic little light because in the final game, the player is going to be holding a lantern that is going to be emitting light. Um, so as a placeholder, let's just open up the player scene here by double clicking on it in the file system or clicking on the little... Uh, icon right here to open that up. We're going to open up our player and we are just going to right click on the camera, go add child node, and we are going to search for an OmniLight 3D. Now with this OmniLight 3D, we can click on the light drop down. Uh, we can change the color here to maybe be something more akin to a lamp. Okay, so maybe a nice orange, something like that. Energy, we'll bump that up. Uh, we'll also bump up the range a bit as well. There we go. Now, if we go back into our main scene here and press play, what you'll notice is that there is now a nice little light around the player. Okay, but the rest of our environment doesn't really look that good. It looks pretty bland. Our skybox is gray. Uh, we have no obstacles. We have no trees, no rocks. So let's fix that as well. So we'll exit out of this. And inside of our main scene here, what we're going to do is first of all, uh, we are going to be storing all of our terrain objects. Everything that we want to have our AI walk around or on, we are going to store inside of a navigation region. So we're going to create that here. We're going to create a navigation region 3D, and we're going to make our terrain a child of that. Now on the navigation th region 3D, we are going to go over to the inspector and create a brand new navigation mesh. So the reason we're doing this is because if we want, for example, our terrain to be walkable on or a rock to be avoidable, we need to make that a child of the navigation region 3D node. So let's start placing down some rocks and trees. So I'm going to go into the models folder here and you'll see we have a rock folder. Now inside of that, we have a, have a rock scene, which we're going to drag in. There we go. We've got a rock. Uh, make sure it is a child of the navigation region 3D. Same thing for the tree. So we can open up the tree folder here and drag in the tree scene. And there we go. Now, the next step is going to basically just be populating our world with these objects. So I'm just going to get into an overhead view here. And I am then going to just go ahead and start copy and pasting these objects around. Now, when it comes to designing your levels, it's very important that you design it with the actual gameplay in mind, okay? Because rem remember, our game is going to involve two things. It's going to involve the player walking around trying to find the hidden items that are placed in our level, as well as avoiding the enemies. So you need to be aware of those two things while developing your level, as that is going to influence how you design it. So what design decisions did I make for this level right here? Well, basically, these rocks are going to be the main source of obstacle and sort of obscuring the enemy for the player, okay? So behind these rocks are where we are going to place our chalices. So for example, if the player starts in the middle here, they are not going to be able to look around and see any of them because they are going to be behind the rocks. 
Now, these rocks also provide um, the it provides the ability for the enemies to be hidden from the player as well, okay? When the player's walking around them, they might not be sure what is around the corner, okay? So even though it is an open field, there is still a lot of hiding spots for the enemies and for the items to be in, okay? And that's what we want. We want the player to not be sure, you know, if there's something behind the rock, and so they will have to then go around and look themselves. Uh, and these trees are here to just add to the atmosphere as well, and maybe as a little obstacle if the enemy is chasing after you. But the main aspect are the rocks, okay? So they do add in as a gameplay element. So now what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and design your own level as well. If you've got other items that you want to add, maybe you've got other obstacles, maybe you have an entirely different setting that you want to design, you can go ahead and do that. And in the next lesson, we'll be right back so that we can start setting up our atmosphere and our fog to make it actually look like a horror game. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be working on setting up our atmosphere, our lighting, our sky, and our fog to make this look like an actual horror game, okay? Because right now, you know, it kind of works. We can, it's sort of dark, but our sky is gray. Uh, we can still sort of see stuff, even though there's no, you know, directional light acting as our sun. Um, you know, it's, it needs some tweaking. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to select our navigation region. And at the top here, we're going to click bake navigation mesh. And as you can see, it has now baked all of the nav mesh. So now uh, our enemies, once we implement them, can navigate around everything, which is very nice. So the next step is going to be adding in all those things I just mentioned. And for this, we are going to use a world environment node. So let's create that right here, world environment. And this basically allows us to have fog, change the sky, the ambient lighting, all those things. So on our world environment, we're going to go to the inspector and we are gonna create a new environment uh, resource right here. We can then open that up and you can see there is a large number of different things that we can fill out. So the first one is going to be our background, which is basically our sky. And we're gonna change the mode from clear color to custom color. And we're gonna set that to be black. Now, when I press plate, as you'll see, everything is black. Now, the reason why is because um, when we set the sky black, this also changes the ambient light. And the ambient light is basically the light or the intensity of the light that is there when we have no other light shining on it. So for example, if I change the color here to be pure white and I press play, you'll notice that everything around us is suddenly visible. And this is because um, everything in shadow basically uses that ambient light. And if it's white, then that means all of the shadowed areas are going to be white. Whereas if we change the color to be black, that means everything is gonna be black that is not touched by light. So that is how we're gonna create this nice, scary environment. Um, so we also have the player light now, and automatically you can see it is already a lot scarier because we're not sure what is out past our player's light. And in fact, what we're gonna do is we are going to change the player's light a tiny bit, just so it has a bit more range, okay? So we'll select our player, select that Omni Light 3D, open up Omni, and change the range up to 20. We also have the attenuation, which is basically the fall off. And I'm just gonna bring this down to about 1.5, okay? Just so it has a lot of more of a smoother fall off here. And the energy, I'm gonna bring that down to be three. Now, if you press play, you can see now we have our light. It is going out a bit further, but it's still darkness, okay? You can see that you know, we can't quite see that far. And um, it may be a bit hard on your monitor to see this as, you know, we are working with a dark scene here. So um, of course, when you're working on this game, you can change those values as you wish. So there we go. Now we need another thing and that is going to be our fog. Okay, we're gonna have a nice red fog overlaying everything here. So it looks a lot more atmospheric. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so in our main scene here, we're gonna select our world environment and what we're gonna do is we are going to go over to the volumetric fog. Now, volumetric fog is basically fog that exists in 3D space. Okay, typical fog just renders um, your fog once it gets to a certain range on your screen, whereas volumetric fog, we can sort of walk through it and I th it's a lot nicer for a game like this. So we're gonna enable that. And then we're gonna change the emission color to be we're gonna make this a nice sort of a darkish red, something like that. 
Uh, we are then going to go over to where we have the density and we're going to change this to 0 0.1. So it is going to be a lot denser as you can see. Uh, but there is an issue and that is it's kind of bright. Okay, we press play and you can see it looks like this. Okay, it's kind of insane. Uh, oh, now you see we have this sort of weird lighting bug and the reason why is because we have the player's light basically in the middle of their head, which is causing an issue. So I'm going to select the Omni light and I'm just going to move it forward a bit here just so it is out of the player's view. Um, and yep, there you go. You can see it's a lot nicer. We can sort of see the light source now in 3D space. But yep, the issue here is that our uh, skybox, not our skybox, but our fog is basically lighting up the scene, which is not what we want. We are actually going to change the emission, okay? We are not going to make the emission this, um, this red, rather we're going to make the emission black, which basically means it's going to emit no light. And the albedo is what we're going to make that red okay so we're gonna make the albedo that red so let's go ahead and just get that set here okay let's find that nice deep red color something like this there we go make it a bit darker okay now the next step is going to involve changing some of the actual image properties okay such as the brightness the contrast and the saturation so we can close down volumetric fog and go down to where we have adjustments, okay? And this changes basically the image itself, the output image. So we're going to enable that. Um, for brightness, we probably want to keep this at 1 since we don't want to make it too bright or too dark. So we'll just keep brightness on 1. Now for contrast, as you can see, this is what it looks like when we bump it up. And we probably want some contrast, so I'm going to make this 1.2, okay? So the image is a bit more contrasting. And then for saturation, as you can see, it basically makes the colors more saturated, more bold. We're going to set this to be 1.5, okay, just so that the colors do stand out a bit more. So now we can press play and have a look at the changes, okay? So first of all, you'll notice that uh, the image looks a lot more bold because we changed those settings. Uh, we have our nice red fog. We have our light, which at the moment is just floating in midair, but in the next lesson, we'll be implementing the lamp for the player. Uh, and yeah, so feel free to tweak those world environment settings even more if you wish to, you know, adjust how your scene looks like, depending on if it's an indoor scene, an outdoor scene, um, it might be a scene set on another planet. You, of course, want to change those things um, relative to the game you are creating. So have a go at that. And in the next lesson, we'll implement our player's lamp. So our light is no longer going to be floating in midair.